Good morning, teachers, and my beloved batchmates. Today, I, Shiva Mathur, and I, Krishna Kant Sharma, are going to present a seminar on the topic of gram staining. But firstly, we would like to express our gratitude towards the faculty members and the doctors who have been working tirelessly in this pandemic, serving a nation and working for the betterment of the patients. And we hope that everyone is safe and healthy. Now, beginning with the topic. These are the points we'll be covering in our discussion today. I'll be discussing about the introduction, the principle, and the procedure of gram staining. I will be discussing about the interpretation, sources of errors and precaution, modifications, and uses of gram staining. So now, beginning with the introduction, the gram staining is a differential staining technique that is commonly used in microbiology. A differential staining technique means a technique that can differentiate bacteria into groups. Like the gram staining can differentiate the bacteria into a gram positive group and a gram negative group. The technique was first developed by Sir Hans Christian Gram in the year 1884. Now, regarding the principle of gram staining, three theories have been proposed. First is the pH theory. According to this theory, the cytoplasm of the gram positive organisms is highly acidic in nature. That is, the pH lies in the range of two to three, and the dyes we're using are basic in nature, and that is the reason why the gram-positive organisms can easily retain the primary stain. The second theory is the magnesium ribonucleate theory. According to this theory, a compound of magnesium ribonucleate and basic protein is concentrated at the cell membranes of the gram-positive bacteria and helps them in retaining the primary stain, while this is absent in the case of gram-negative bacteria. The third and the most important theory is the cell wall theory. According to this theory, the Gram reaction of a bacteria depends on the cell wall composition. According to this theory, the events that are happening during the staining are as follows: First, when we put the primary stain, the stain molecules are small in size and can easily move in and out of the cell through the pores in the cell wall. Then, when we put iodine, again the iodine molecules themselves are very small in size and can easily move in and out of the bacterial cell through the pores in the cell wall. But When both the iodine and the dye are present inside the cell, then they form a complex. This is known as the di-iodine complex. The size of this complex is very large, and it cannot escape easily through the pores through which the dye and the iodine had entered previously. Thus, in this way, the iodine is acting as a mordant. Till now, the events were same in all the bacteria. The difference comes when the decolorizer is put. When the decolorizer is put. Then the gram-positive bacteria have a tendency to retain the primary stain, while the gram-negative bacteria have a tendency to lose the primary stain. This is attributed to the differences in their cell wall composition. Like in the gram-negative bacterial cell wall, we know there is a lipopolysaccharide layer and there is more lipid content. And the decolorizer we're using is basically an organic solvent that can easily dissolve the lipid. And thus, on the action of decolorizer in the gram-negative bacterial cell wall, large pores are formed through which. The di-iodine complex can easily escape, while in the gram-positive bacterial cell wall, we know that the lipid content is very less, and thus, on the action of decolorizer, the new pores that are formed are very small in size and very less in number, and that is the reason why the larger di-iodine complex cannot easily escape through the gram-positive bacterial cell wall. Another reason is the peptidoglycan layer. The peptidoglycan layer acts as a permeability barrier. In the gram-positive bacterial cell wall, the peptidoglycan layer is very thick. And is tightly cross-linked and does not allow the di-iodine complex to escape easily. While in the gram-negative bacterial cell wall, the peptidoglycan layer is very thin and is not tightly cross-linked, and thus it cannot act as a permeability barrier. Moreover, alcohol, when used as a decolorizer, is believed to shrink the size of pores, and this could be another reason why the gram-positive bacteria have a tendency to retain the primary stain. And thus, in the last step of the staining, we use a counter stain to visualize the gram-negative bacteria who have lost the primary stain. Now, we'll see the procedure of gram staining. First, we'll see how to prepare a smear, and then we'll see how to stain the smear. Now, the steps for preparing a smear are as follows. Step one: take a glass slide, put a drop of water on it using an inoculating loop. In step two, pick up a bacterial colony using an inoculating loop. And emulsify it in the drop of water to form a suspension. This is our smear. Let the smear to get air dried. Do not heat the smear for drying purposes. We heat the smear gently by moving it over a flame after the smear has dried for fixation, so that the bacteria can get stick to the slide and the morphology is conserved. Now, regarding the staining part, 
Firstly, we'll see the reagents that we can use. Now we know we'll be using a primary stain, a mordant, a decolorizer, and a counter stain. In the primary stain, the most commonly used is crystal violet, whereas we can also use methyl violet or gentian violet. As a mordant, the most commonly used is Gram's iodine, which is a dilute solution of iodine, whereas we can also use Lugol's iodine, which is a more concentrated solution of iodine. As a decolorizer, the most commonly used is alcohol, which can be either 95% alcohol or absolute alcohol or even spirit. Other decolorizers that can be used are acetone, acetone alcohol, iodine acetone and aniline xylol. As a counter stain, the most commonly used is dilute carbol fucin, whereas we can also use safranin, basic fucin or neutral red. When we'll discuss about the modifications of gram staining, then we'll see that when and where these different different reagents are used. Now, the staining steps. First of all, make sure that we're practicing the general laboratory hygiene, that is, wearing the mask and gloves and handling the culture and smear with caution, etc. And after every step, we'll have to rinse the slide. So for rinsing the slide, we hold the slide with a thumb and an index finger in an inclined position and we run a gentle stream of water over it to rinse it. Now, the steps are as follows. In step 1, we'll place the primary stain. So, place the slide on a staining rack and then pour crystal violet solution over it covering the entire slide. Keep it for 1 minute and then rinse it with water. In step 2, we'll put the mordant. So, pour grams iodine over the slide covering the entire slide and again keep it for 1 minute and then rinse it with water. In step 3, we'll use the decolorizer. Now the time for which we have to allow the decolorizer action to happen depends on the decolorizer we're using. Like if we're using 95% alcohol, we keep it for 20 to 30 seconds and then rinse it immediately. If we're using acetone, we keep it for 2 to 3 seconds, then we rinse it immediately. In our laboratory, we're using spirit, so after putting the decolorizer, we rinse it immediately. In step 4, we'll put the counter stain. In counter stain, we use dilute carbol fucin, so pour the dilute carbol fucin over the slide, covering the entire slide. Now, keep it for 30 seconds and then rinse it with water. Let the smear to get air dried and then it is ready for examination. Now, I would like Mr. Krishan Kant Sharma to continue the discussion forward. For doing interpretation of the gram stain, firstly, we dry the slide and put a drop of cedar wood oil and examine it under the oil immersion lens. On examination, we found that gram positive bacteria resist the decolorization and appears as violet. On the other hand, gram negative bacteria decolorize and loses their primary stain and take counter stain. Thus, they appear as pink. By examining the gram reactivity, morphology and arrangement of bacteria, a microbiologist has to report these features and if these features resemble with any bacteria, then he has to report it. As for example, as we can see in the left image, the gram positive cocci are arranged in clusters. So he has to report it like as the given gram stain smear shows the gram positive cocci arranged in clusters morphologically resembling staphylococcus. In the right image we can see gram negative bacilli. So we have to write it as the given gram stain smear shows the gram negative bacilli. Now in these tables gram positive cocci and gram positive bacilli are arranged with their morphology and arrangement. Similarly in these tables gram negative bacilli and gram negative cocci are arranged with their morphology and arrangement by observing which can give a idea of their presence in smear. Now we will come on to the sources of error and precautions. In this the point that is noteworthy is that decolorization is not an all or none phenomena. Decolorization does not mean that gram positive bacteria will not decolorize and gram negative bacteria will always completely decolorize being gram positive bacteria has more tendency to retain primary stain for a longer time as compared to gram negative bacteria it means decolorization depends upon the decolorizer and duration for which it is used. That's why gram-negative bacteria can falsely appear as 
gram positive due to the under decolorization and gram positive bacteria can falsely appear to the gram negative due to the over decolorization other reasons due to which gram positive bacteria can falsely appear gram negative are mechanical rupture of cell wall addition of bile salts addition of ribonucleases and old cultures now we will come on to the topic that is modification of the gram staining originally hans christian grams used aniline gentian violet as primary stain lugal's iodine as mordant and absolute alcohol as decolorizer and bismarck brown as counter stain now we'll come on to the modification of the gram staining that is four first Kopilov and Biermann modification in which primary stain is made up of two solution solution A and solution B solution A is made up of methyl violet solution and solution B is made up of sodium bicarbonate <laughs> solution in this mordant we use mixture of iodine sodium hydroxide and water we use acetone as decolorizer and basic fusion as counter stain the second one is jensen's modification this is especially used for staining of meningococci and gonococci in this methyl violet is used as primary stain lugal's iodine as mordant and absolute alcohol is as decolorizer and neutral red as counter stain is used the third one is rigert's modification this is especially used for tissue sections in this aniline xylol is used as decolorizer the fourth one is priston and morels modification in this primary stain is mixture of crystal violet methylated spirit and ammonium oxalate and decolorizer is iodine acetate now we will come on to the uses of gram staining the first point is differentiating bacteria into the gram positive and gram negative as we know that gram staining is a differential staining technique and this has a great importance this is a considerable importance because gram positive and gram negative bacteria differ not only in staining characteristic and structure but also in the growth requirements susceptibility to the antibiotics and pathogenicity so it has great laboratory value and clinical importance the second use of gram staining for identification of the bacteria it means when we get a sample then as a preliminary clue we do the gram staining and the morphology gram reactivity and arrangement of bacteria guides us to perform appropriate biochemical test for its identification the third point it can give a preliminary clue to set a special culture that is not routinely used for example by examining the morphology and arrangement of bacteria we get then that it is a anaerobic one then timely and accordingly we can set a special culture the fourth point is early presumptive identification and starting empirical treatment as we can say that by gram staining we can get an presumptive give clue about the bacteria so this can be used for starting early empirical treatment in the case of severe disease and uh, clinician cannot wait for the definitive culture report this is also useful for fastidious bacteria <laughs> because they take time to grow on culture the fifth point is apart from bacteria it can stain some fungi like candida and cryptococcus they appears as gram positive in the smear with this i would like to conclude my discussion these are our references we hope we have been able to address and deliver the topic effectively through this video we would like to thank phod dr vil rastogi ma'am for giving us this wonderful opportunity i would also like to take this opportunity to thank dr vil rastogi ma'am for the e lectures and assignments that are being given to us time to time so that we are at par with studies 
वी वुड ऑल्सो लाइक टू थैंक सीनियर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर गीता परियार मैम फॉर हर गाइडेंस एंड सपोर्ट वी वुड लाइक टू थैंक ऑल द फैकल्टी मेंबर्स ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ द माइक्रो बायोलॉजी फॉर देयर इमेंस सपोर्ट एंड ए स्पेशल थैंक्स टू डॉक्टर महेश मेहता सर फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग अस दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड मोटिवेटिंग अस फॉर द सेम थैंक यू एवरी थैंक यू एवरी